Hi there, uh, Wasted Potential 616, back again with uh, more <laughs> comic reviews. Okay, um, I'm going to try and um, speed things up a little bit in these reviews because, uh, well, I don't think the last ones have been that good, so I'm going to try and uh, condense uh, what I'm saying a little bit. Anyway, I'm prolonging it already, so let's get started. Right, Secret Warriors issue 6, okay. Um, this series so far has been brilliant. Now this is kind of the end uh, to the current story arc, so um, uh, it'd be kind of weird picking this one up um, if you haven't picked it up before. I recommend actually trying to pick them up from the start or uh, picking it up in trade. Now um, this, this whole storyline kind of spawned from the Secret Invasion thing, but it mainly stars Nick Fury. He's got a little crew with him, but he's the main star, and it's just brilliant. There's intrigue. Uh, a lot of uh, action. Uh, Nick Fury in this is a great character. He's a real bastard in this, and he's really just he's got a mission to do, and he does it. And he doesn't really care who he steps on, and uh, he's uh, and just the way the other characters react to him, it's it's, it's brilliant. Also, there's some really good uh, villains in this. Hydra, are now actually kind of like a force to be reckoned with. Um, they've also brought, brought back um, a Wolverine villain, the Gorgon, uh, who was in uh, Wolverine. Eni uh, enemy, public enemy, I believe it was called, and then agent of Shield. So um, yeah, he was a really good villain, and they brought him back. You know, that was one of the best Wolverine stories I've ever read, by the way. But um, yeah, anyway, he's back. This is just really good, and um, yeah, I can't recommend this strongly. Uh, Bendis and Hickman doing great job. Uh, the art is great. What's the artist's name? Uh, Stefano Cazelli. I can never pronounce the artist's name, but yeah, look. Pick this up. This is brilliant. Try and pick it up, get it from the beginning, and uh, we'll see, yeah, see what happens. It's really good. I feel this hasn't been given quite enough attention, as it doesn't seem like a mainstream uh, superhero title, but it, uh, it's you'll get more superhero action in this than uh, most other comics. Anyway, moving on. Right. Okay, Ultimatum, issue, issue 5, okay, mm. this whole Ultimatum thing, they're just kind of clearing up the um, Ultimate Universe. Um, well, once again, people died in this issue, and uh, now the story's ended. Um, hmm, it's Jeff Loeb again, he hasn't been writing, writing great stuff right, lately. I can basically sum this whole miniseries up um, in like a sentence. Well, the story. It was Magneto has like a terrorist attack, messes up the world in one big go, lots of people die, then the heroes go after him, then he gets killed, and then there's a small bit of aftermath. And that's it, really. I mean, you know, the artwork in this is great. David Finch is brilliant. I mean, he draws a mean Wolverine, you know. But, um, oh, I mean, Wolverine. You know, brilliant. I probably can't see it that well, but um, there we go. But I mean, it, okay, spoiler alert: Wolverine in this gets killed. Um, Cyclops gets killed. And loads of characters have been killed in this. You know, when they revamp the Marvel Universe, um, they're not going to have a m many characters to uh, start with. So pick this up. Well, if you've been interested in the Marvel Ultimate Universe, um, I suppose you've already been picking this up. If you haven't, it might be worth picking up just to get an idea of what's going to happen with the new Ultimate Universe. But um, as a story itself, I found it lacking. Uh, it wasn't that great. It really wasn't. It was just really simple, and the the, the deaths kind of um, lost their impact. They really did. But you know, the art was great. The art was great. You know, you can get it for that. Um, you know, it ends on a bit. It's a bit of a cliffhanger. I'll, j I'll tell you what, I'll just be interested to see what they do with the Ultimate Universe next. You know, but as a series, this uh, this wasn't great, Ultimatum. There we go. Right, on to the next one. Okay, New Avengers, issue 55. Um, you know, okay, pretty good. I've enjoyed this series so far. Um, once again, to be expected in the series, uh, a lot of talking heads, you know, there's a lot of talking, a lot of characters of element. 
which is good, you know, uh, but it kind of takes a bit of, uh, I don't know, it takes time away from the action, and um, once again the villains in this are going to be the Hoods, sort of secret society villains, and I kind of feel like um, they've been used enough, and I'd like to see the new Avengers, you know, fight some other people, it's, uh, you know, I think it's getting a little bit tired to be honest, but, you know, it's okay. Um, I mean, it was, there's some fun stuff with Captain America being pissed off that his house is being messed up by other heroes, you know. Uh, another, th <laughs> it's not a great thing, but another thing I was glad about in this was, um, while well, the New Avengers have a meeting, you know, Wolverine isn't there, and they said, oh, he had to go to the X-Men, which, um, you know, it's kind of nice to see, um, you know, a bit of continuity there, because Wolverine sort of seems everywhere all at once in the Marvel Universe, so I was glad to see some of that. You know, it's the beginning of the story arc, so um, this could get better. I just I just wish they'd have some different villains. You know, um, it was okay. It was enjoyable. It was alright. Okay, next one. Okay, X-Men Forever, issue 4. Um, I'm not sure if you guys know about the concept of this, but it was it's basically what would have happened if Chris Claremont could have carried on writing the X-Men um, after he left um, in the early 90s. Um, this is fun. Um, it's very nostalgic. It feels like a kind of 90s comic. It reminds me almost of the uh, animated series in the early 90s. Um, there's a lot going on, a lot of intrigue. I mean, Wolverine's apparently dead. Um, it's, you know, the characters are fun. It's okay. It's it's okay. The art's great. It reminds me a little bit of Jim Lee, uh, who's one of my favourite X-Men artists. You know, a lot going on. It'll be interesting. There's a cliffhanger here. Um, yeah, I'm interested. It's exciting. I can see this running out of momentum, but hopefully it won't. Um, and also, I'm not sure whether this was exactly what Chris Claremont was going to do, because I do remember in a few interviews him saying that he was going to be killed by Omega Red and then resurrected by the Hand as a villain, uh, Wolverine. Um, I don't know, but anyway, that doesn't matter. Um, yeah, this is a fun read. It's uh, it's pretty good. Okay. All right, uh, issue two of uh, Dark X Men Utopia. It's uh, two or three. It just sort of explains the new. Uh, sort of gives a bit of a backstory on why the characters in this new Dark X Men have joined Norman Osborn. Yeah, it's okay. I don't think it's necessary for the whole Ut Utopia storyline. Um, you know. Uh, Cloak and Dagger kind of explains why they've joined. Um, the Weapon Omega storyline was okay. Um, I'm not too fond of the character. Um, and then it has um, the Dark Wolverine Dakin storyline. Now, I'm liking this character in his own series. Um, he's developing well. But I almost felt this wasn't necessary because the spotlights, you know, I mean, he's got his own series, Dakin, Dark Wolverine. Um, he's appeared in Dark Avengers, Wolverine Origins. I didn't think this was necessarily uh, necessarily necessary, but it was an alright little story. Um, so, as I say, this wasn't that necessary to the Utopia story, but um, I will get the third issue, you know, just to keep up to date. And uh, that's it, because um, I kind of didn't get all the all the comics in my slot this week, but uh, hopefully I'll catch up later. Also, I uh, just wanted to say, I saw that um, Green Lantern First Flight, the animated thing, yeah, that was a lot of fun, pretty good, um, you know, it didn't seem to, it, it wasn't a, a kiddie cartoon, it was, it went straight for the jugular in some parts, it was quite, you know, vicious in some bits, it was good, and Sinestro was a brilliant villain, you know, it was good, and also, I just wanted to mention, um, before I go, I saw the trailer for that Wolverine anime. Hmm, I'm not too sure about that. The uh, the animation looks great, but it doesn't look like Wolverine apart from his claw, you know, having claws. Um, but hey, I'll give it a chance. Anyway, I think that's about it for now. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll be back with more comic reviews when I can be bothered. Bye.